How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to change the world, said Anne Frank whilst in hiding during World War II. This is me and my soon-to-be grandmother Nanny, and these words are something we both hold to be true within our lives. War can impact a family in many ways, and impact a nation for all eternity. For the Jewish people, the Holocaust had an immeasurable impact on our identity as a nation. For me, that story hits a little closer to home. Is that you yes, and I remember, yes. Yeah. You got a very good memory. This is Deborah, but we all call her Nanny. And she is my soon to be grandmother when I marry her grandson Joel in December. I thought before Joel and I tied the knot, it was time to learn a little bit more about his family history and to learn how this tied into our new life together. Nanny was born in 1932 in Krakow, Poland. Her mother, Sarah, struggled to have children and as the only child, she was the apple of everyone's eye. Winters were spent sledding in the snow with cousins and friends and summers on holidays by the sea. Nanny remembers a holiday with her mother, her mother's friend and her daughter, Hanka. They would run along the pier and buy ice creams called penguins, fat chocolate wedges. She told me, closing her eyes, she could still taste it in her mouth. In 1939, German tanks rolled into Poland and the entire world was changed forever. As a small seven-year-old child, Nanny remembers a remarkable amount, showing the huge impact the war had on all its victims. Being Jews, the Horowitz family was discriminated against terribly and forced out of their home and to move to a small town where the bakery refused to sell them any bread. Not for money, not for rubies, not for diamonds, Nanny told me. Why? Because they were Jews. It was at that point that they lived on eating barley alone, another vivid memory in her mind. As we sifted through the photographs, one of a young child holding a doll appeared among the black and white images. This is me with my favorite doll, she said, and that doll had a part in saving our lives. The doll that I loved so much, uh, my father asked me whether he can take it and give it to a German officer and we had to uh, bribe him for the foreign papers that we had, we had needed a, a signature. The Horowitz family spent the remainder of the war in Bergen-Belsen, a Nazi concentration camp. Nanny spent much of her time infested with lice and ate little but bread and thin soup. When the war ended and the camp was liberated in 1945, she was stick thin and only 13 years old. Well, time marches on as it does, and at the age of 17, Nanny found herself along with her father on the shores of Melbourne, Australia. She met her husband soon after arriving and three months later, at the age of 19, they were married. Fast forward to 2014. This is me, Beth, my fiance Joel and Nanny at our engagement party. When I was thinking about Nanny's story and about the Jewish people's experiences during the war in general, I got to thinking about giving voices to the voiceless. During the war, the Jewish people were discriminated against humiliated, kept prisoner, and murdered. It is because we know what it is like to be persecuted that we can and must stand up for those who are being persecuted against today. This is part of the reason that I am so passionate about becoming a teacher, to impart to my students the importance of kindness, tolerance, and standing up for what is right. My hope is that by educating our young people, it will mean that no child will have to experience what Nanny and millions of other children experienced between the years of 1939 to 45 and continue to experience till this day. <laughs>